Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today, as you can see, it is Doom. And not classic Doom for a change. It is the uh, 2016 version of Doom. It came out in, uh, I believe, May 2016. Uh, and it is awesome. And um, ever since it's come out, I've been wanting to do a Let's Play of the single player campaign. Um, and I went ahead and actually streamed this again on Twitch uh, about two or three weeks ago. So I feel like I'm relatively warmed up. I should be able to run through the game without too much trouble. I probably will die a couple of times because it is a challenging game. It's like legitimately challenging, uh, which is kind of refreshing, actually. Um, so yeah, we'll see uh, what we can do with this. Now, unlike my normal classic game Let's Plays, uh, this is going to be a long Let's Play. This is probably going to take me anywhere from like, I would say 10 to 12 hours to complete. Hopefully less. Um, but I make no guarantees, especially if I die a couple of times or more than a couple of times. Uh, it might take us a good bit longer than that. But cross your fingers for me, guys. Uh, let's try to get through this relatively quickly. Uh, all right. So I need to basically delete a game slot. So it doesn't really matter. I've played through this game a bunch of times. So we'll just go ahead and delete this one. And so game slot number three is where we're going to start. And all the settings actually should carry over from slot to slot, actually. So we're going to go ahead and just jump into the campaign. We're going to do ultra violence. Uh, Nightmare is the next difficulty up. And even though it's red here, it is unlocked, actually. You can actually go right into it. Uh, ultra nightmare is nightmare, um, but it's uh, no continues. So once you die, you're dead for the entire game. Uh, I did try playing Ultra Nightmare for a little bit. I got a couple stages in, and then I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to beat this mode. Um, at least not on the console. Maybe I could see myself doing it with keyboard and mouse on the PC, but uh, we're actually on the Xbox One right now, so it's a little bit harder to be as fast and nimble uh, as it is on the PC. Uh, Nightmare I have completed, and it's very challenging, um, but totally worth playing if you've already done Ultra Violence. Uh, just a heads up for you newbies out there, I don't recommend playing Ultra Violence when you first play this game if you're not like a super seasoned old school first person shooter player. Ultra Violence in Doom 2016 is a lot more challenging than Ultra Violence in Classic Doom. I'd say Doom 2016 is a lot more challenging uh, in general, um, not counting Classic Doom Nightmare Mode, but that's just a totally different beast altogether. Um, so, but for anybody that's new to this game, I would suggest playing on Hurt Me Plenty. And if you have problems with Hurt Me Plenty, which I actually have heard people having problems with it, um, you know, raise the difficulty back down a notch, uh, and, um, uh, you know, give that a shot. But we're going to be doing ultra violence because that's actually what I started the game on when I first purchased it. I made the mistake of going straight into this on ultra violence, classic doom style, thinking it would be like classic doom. And it's, it's like classic doom, but the difficulty is not like classic doom. Um, enemies in this game are far more vicious. They're far more nimble. Um, uh, they're faster. They climb on walls and stuff like that. Kind of like in doom three, where like the imps climb on walls, but unlike doom three, uh, the enemies are really, really fast in this game, especially the imps. Uh, and you see the imps right from, right from the beginning, basically, or just a few minutes into the game. Uh, one other thing I'm probably going to do in this Let's Play is uh, I am going to be cutting out the load sequences. So in the future between stages when load sequences pop up, I'm probably going to go in and chop those out. So I'll try to remember not to talk between the load sequences or during the load sequences. That Just to make this, this playthrough progress a little bit faster. And if I die a bunch of times at a section, I might just chop out a bunch of those deaths as well. Um, because each section I plan on doing for this Let's Play series is going to be anywhere from two to two and a half hours, maybe three hours long. Um, and just to keep this as tight as it can be, uh, I'll definitely do a little bit of editing with this. Uh, but not a lot of editing. You know, I let you guys know uh, that are familiar with my channel anyway. I like to play through these games from start to finish. I do it pretty raw. I don't edit my playthroughs. Um, you know, I don't like chop up and just show you the highlights or anything like that. It's all about showing you what the entire game is like from start to finish. Um, usually on a higher difficulty, if at all possible. So, uh, Doom 2016 has a bunch of these, uh, story sequences. Uh, some of them are mandatory, like this one you have to sit through. Um, but then they usually don't last very long. And so we're, we're getting our suit right from the very beginning. One of the things I saw commonly praised about this game was how it sort of like eschewed the story. 
compared to modern first-person shooters. Now, it does have more story in-game than classic Doom ever did, um, but I think it's uh, implemented in a very, uh, very good way. I don't mind a little bit of story in my first-person shooters, uh, but uh, I don't want a ton of story. You know, I wanted to focus mostly on the gunplay and the action, and Doom 2016, fortunately, does do that. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of uh, dialogue here, and then your guy pushes the, uh, the screen away, and it's pretty much just you get on right to the game. Um, Doom 2016 really starts off very, very strong. It's, it's, uh, I, like, when I first got this game, I was just, I was so stoked that I was playing a, uh, sort of like an old school style first person shooter in 2016. And it was kind of like making fun of where, like, the modern FPS genre, uh, has ended up. And, uh, and as a classic Doom fan, you guys know I love Doom. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I've done a ton of Let's Plays on my on my channel of it, and I still stream it on Twitch on the regular. Um, I was just like, I was like a little kid again, honestly, when I uh, was playing the very beginning of Doom. It's just they did everything just right um, for uh, as a classic Doom fan. All right, so we're basically in a little bit of action now. So what Doom 2016 introduces is what's called the Glory Kill. Um, and you could do the glory kill when enemies are glowing, and you do that by pressing down the right analog stick by default. Uh, it's basically a melee attack. It acts as a melee attack. Um, this is also your action button. So like right here, we need to press the right analog stick, and it actually tells you on the screen. And this is going to give us our shotgun. So you get the shotgun right from the very beginning, just like you get the shotgun right from the very beginning in Classic Doom and Doom 2. And we're going to press the right analog stick again to open this. <clears throat> and this is where our imps appear. They introduce the imp. And you can see the imp is a lot more vicious than uh, the Doom 3 imp. I actually revisited Doom 3 just recently, and I found it kind of interesting uh, how gimpy some of the, uh, the the enemies not necessarily looked, but how they like moved and so forth. And Doom, Doom 3 was amazing for the time. If you guys weren't around back then, you guys have no idea how amazing that game was when it came out uh, from a technical perspective. Um, gameplay was a different story. Not everybody loved it. I liked it a lot. Um, but visually, man, it was incredible. And, um, but going back to it today, especially after playing Doom 2016, you can kind of see where the tech, um, how, how far the tech has come since then. And if you compare the classic amps in Doom 3 to the, the new amps in this one, it's like night and day. All right, so this is a uh, what I believe is called a gore nest, and these uh, basically offer fight sequences, and you, you have to access these when you see them. So we're going to go ahead and just use our uh, glory kill on it, and then this is basically going to start a fight. And this is how a lot of the fights occur in this game. Uh, a lot of times you're sort of like trapped in an area, and then you have to start fighting guys. Um... So the glory kill mechanic, a lot of you guys probably already know how it operates. Uh, a lot of people were talking about this game when it came out and talking about how the game operates and so forth. So the glory kill, when enemies are blinking, you can activate it. Um, and the big thing about the glory kill is that you can get health back from enemies. And I just realized this is actually going to be really tough because I basically have like no volume on me right now. I might have to actually crank the game volume up just a tiny bit and hope that the microphone doesn't pick it up. Because uh, I have no idea where these guys are, because I can barely hear them. Um, actually, now that I think about it, in future episodes of this series, I might have to actually bring out my HDMI audio splitter box so I can get some actual headphones on while I do this. And um, So basically, like I was saying, though, the glory kill, what it does is... Uh, uh, it'll oftentimes give you health pickups. Not really oftentimes. It, it always does, actually, for the most part. I think... Usually, it gives you health pickups. Um, so, you know, as you can see, I'm only down to 66 health, and I was actually farther down than that. Um, so, you actually, you lose health quite quickly in this game, uh, at least on Ultra Violence. And maybe on some of the, uh, the lighter difficulty modes, it's not as bad, but you can get killed very, very, very quickly in this game, faster than pretty much any other Doom out there. Enemies do a ton of damage. Um... And they can attack you in rapid succession, so you can be dead very, very quickly. Uh, you can also uh, sort of zoom in a little bit by holding down the left trigger. And with this pistol you get, it's sort of like, I, I don't remember if it's the plasma pistol or whatever it's called. 
Um, you can actually do a charge attack on it. You can get headshots with it, kill enemies in one hit, and so forth. Uh, this weapon also has unlimited ammunition, so, you know... I was actually going and switching over to it during that battle simply because, um, you know, the enemies were kind of far away and it seems to have uh, better accuracy at long ranges. So I went ahead and just switched over to the uh, the pistol again. Um, these little guys right here, these, uh, you know, blue power-ups, blue canisters, that's health. Um, greenish items are armor. Very similar to classic Doom, you know, the basic green armor. And this is basically where the game really kicks off. We get tossed into the uh, the first main level, I would say, and then uh, this is where the game really starts. Now, like I said, I'm gonna try to turn it up a notch or two. <clears throat> So yeah, this is going to be really interesting to do because, you know, the last time I did a Let's Play that was 10 to 12 hours long was my Heretic Let's Play series uh, back before October. It was actually late summer, I think, when I did those. And uh, um, so it'll be interesting to, to try to do this in a similar fashion. Uh, I do want to try to do some longer Let's Plays like this. Like I thought about dabbling with maybe like a role playing game or something like that. Um, but realistically, this is probably going to be the only one for a while because it's going to be a lot of work to do all of these parts and actually finish the game and and, and so forth. Also, for those of you guys out there, I'm not really uh, much of a modern player, mainly because of this YouTube channel. I do play, I do still play modern games, but I mostly focus on retro stuff thanks to this YouTube channel and Twitch. Uh, it's kind of what people expect of me, but it's also what I enjoy playing the most. I enjoy playing the old school stuff the most. Uh, it's one of the reasons why Dune 2016 was so refreshing for me, though. It's like I was playing a modern game, but it also felt like an old-school game. And um, id Software's games have always been some of my favorite, you know, from Wolfenstein 3D to uh, classic Doom and Doom 2 to Doom 3 to Quake, Quake 2, Quake 3, etc. They offer uh, some of my favorite first-person shooters of all time. And so not only was I playing a modern game that felt like a, an old-school game, but I was also playing a new id Software game that was incredible, uh, which is... That's that's how I know id Software. I grew up with their games. Uh, I still play their games religiously. You guys that watch me on Twitch know I don't just play uh, Doom frequently on stream. I go back and I play Quake a lot as well. And I've even done Let's Plays recently of the first Quake uh, again. And hopefully I'll be able to tackle Quake 2 sometime in the future. Um, hell, I even did a Quake Live Let's Play. <laughs> so, you know... I, I'm not going to be doing lots of uh, modern Let's Plays. I don't ha never really plan on doing modern Let's Plays uh, aside from this game. So uh, don't get the impression that this is going to become the new Dark Souls channel. Although I actually, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys might want to see me play Dark Souls. And that's actually one I might make an exception for sometime. But I have to stream it on Twitch first because um, I still haven't played it. I have the first one, but I still haven't played it. A lot of people are telling me to give that one a shot because it's really hard, and it's kind of like Castlevania, they say. Uh, but yeah, aside from Dune 2016, and maybe one or two other exceptions, you guys will not see me Let's Playing uh, many modern games at all. Uh, so it looks like that's it. I can still barely hear what I'm doing. So the checkpoint activated. You can usually tell when the checkpoint activated activates because if you look in the top center of the screen, there's uh, a, uh, a heads-up display that, you know... Uh, sort of like a radar that tells you where to go, which is nice. Uh, one thing I did want to, you know, tell you guys sort of as a disclaimer, we're not going to be trying to seek out uh, lots of the secrets in the game. There, is, there are going to be some secrets we're going to, we're going to get just because they're just kind of convenient. Uh, and I am going to try to show you a couple of the classic Doom rooms. And there's actually one coming up uh, in about five minutes or so, and I'll be able to show you. And, um, people that have never seen this game before, and, but you're a fan of Classic Doom, you're really gonna, you're really gonna get a kick out of, uh, these rooms. We just actually picked up a grenade, and the grenades kind of operate, uh, in a similar way as, say, like, Halo, where you throw grenades, they, they do some good damage. Um, unlike Halo, though, uh, your grenades are actually infinite. You just have to wait for them to charge back up. So if you look in the bottom right-hand portion of the screen, um, where like my gun and, and my ammunition is and so forth. Next to that is, is a little grenade icon that's constantly charging. Uh, I highly recommend 
using the grenades as much as you can just because it's like free ammunition and they do they do a lot of damage basically uh, something else you can kind of see I'm doing is in the very beginning instead of shooting these zombies the zombies have such little health that you can actually just go up and melee them and you'll basically just instant glory kill them which is actually really good because you can kill them without wasting ammo um, but if you're low on health you know it's like a two for one deal you're not you're not wasting ammo but you're also getting health back so, you know, one of the things I want to try with Doom 2016, which I haven't tried yet, is I want to turn off the uh, the blinking uh, option. Um, so basically what happens is, you know, when enemies' health gets low, they start to blink. Uh, makes it very arcade style, but you can actually turn that off. Uh, and even for a console game, Doom 2016 actually gives you quite a few, like, visual and uh, gameplay options and settings to, to tinker with, which is nice and refreshing for a, a modern console FPS. So one of these days, I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn that off, play through this game again without uh, the blinking uh, glory kill indications or indicators, which will be I think really cool. Um, now you can tell when enemies can be glory killed because like they, they start to stagger and so forth. So um, and I think it'll be really interesting to play through the game like that. So what I'm going to do is try to kill these guys. I know there's a bunch of guys that are going to spawn here. Basically, I just want to play it safe because, like I said, these guys can kill you really fast. And something else you guys have probably already realized is that you can also grapple in this game. And it gives the game um, a really nice uh, platforming element to it. The platforming in this game is actually really awesome. Normally, platforming in first-person shooters sucks. Like, it's usually really bad. Um, but in Doom 2016, it is awesome. Like, I love the grapple system in this game. It's, it's uh, so much fun. It makes for fun exploration. You can try to just look around and figure out where you can grapple to. Um, like, actually, let me try to come back up here, come to think of it. Unfortunately, I don't have the double jump, but I actually get that shortly. So I could I could grapple over here. Not even grapple. So this guy right here is actually a combat support drone. So you can actually upgrade your weapons. So I like to go with the explosive shot with the shotgun. And this is one of the coolest things about Doom 2016. And I've heard a lot of complaints about this game where like, oh, you're boxed into too many small arenas and so forth. You know, it's too generic. It's like, well, I guess I can see that in certain regards. But if you're like exploring around, there are so many secrets in this game. And then you get the weapon upgrades. There's a weapon upgrade, um, actually two different weapon upgrades for every single weapon in the game, basically. And they have different abilities that, that start to appear as you upgrade them and so forth. And the game just has so much replay value in just that department alone that it kind of makes up for, um, I guess, the slightly more linear nature uh, and arena-focused gameplay. Now, not every part's like an arena-focused uh, uh, section. Like, I came in here, and yeah, some guys spawned in. But there were guys already here as well. So it's not like, you know, I just got boxed in. I wasn't really forced to fight them, so to say. I could have just ran up and went through that door. Uh, actually, what I'm doing here is I want to show you guys a secret. And this is our first classic Doom uh, area. So we're going to go ahead and just open this up. And uh, I believe this is actually a section from Doom 2, uh, Map 1. And there's a little bit of a, a, a classic Doom jingle on, on the guitar that plays, which is really cool. We're going to toss a grenade up as these guys spawn in. Bam. Oh, he's not dead. He's close to dead, though. I just killed him. Now, these guys can be very, very dangerous because they have these charge shots. And if these charge shots detonate when they're near you... Uh, you can die in pretty much one hit, I think. You, maybe it takes two, but I think it's one of those attacks that pretty much takes away the majority of your health. Alright, so I'm pretty sure it is... Yeah, we gotta hit that one first, which opens up this door, which gives us a little bit of armor. And then this one's just for fun. You don't really have to click it in this one. Um, because in Classic Doom, remember, you couldn't jump in Classic Doom. So basically, you if you wanted to, like, these would have been regular soldiers in Classic Doom 2. Uh, so they would have dropped clips. And so if you wanted to grab those clips for your pistol, uh, you would have had to uh, make sure you press the switches in the right order in order to be able to watch these platforms lower down so you can grab the, the pistols. So this is uh, 50 armor. It's green armor. 
Now, it's just like your regular green armor in this game, except since we're in, like, you know, the classic Doom uh, area, uh, it's got the same uh, sprites and everything from classic Doom, which is awesome. So I just wanted to show that to you guys. It's uh, There's a bunch of those throughout the game. I think there's at least 15, something like that. Uh, so it's really awesome Easter eggs, uh, and in some cases they provide really good items as well. You'll get, uh, you know, uh, 100 health like uh, pickups and stuff like that. You'll get, uh, you know, lots of armor and, and so forth. So in, in certain parts of the game, they can actually help you a ton. And there's actually going to be another Easter egg coming up in uh, just a few moments that I'm going to be able to show you. Uh, you've also got these, like, uh, these sort of, like... Um, sort of like cell phones or PDAs you can pick up as well. They give you these uh, codex entries. Um, it's kind of like a bestiary or a bestiary from, you know, that, it sort of like talks about, you know, enemies and so forth and characters in the game. Um, so if you want to just like sit down and get into like the lore of the game, the options there, but it's the game never really forces it upon you except for very specific parts of the game. You know, certain scripted story sequences basically. All right, so I want to try to play it relatively safe. Like, we got three of these guys here. He's charging up his attack. Those are the attacks I was talking about. They do tons of damage. And what I... Oops, see, there's another one. Now, I recommend glory killing as much as you possibly can when you play this game. Simply because... Uh, there's a lot going on on ultraviolence. And uh, you want to have as much health as you possibly can. See, my health is maxed now, but your health does increase as the game progresses. Is that everybody, or is there one more guy left? No, I think that's everybody. Alright, so switching weapons, uh, towards the beginning, you can actually just uh, press the right button to switch weapons instantly. But if you hold it in, it also slows down the action. And by moving the right analog stick, you can actually select the weapon you want. So even in the middle of uh, chaotic action, you can still switch weapons relatively safely in this game, which is nice. Now, one thing I gotta I gotta really compliment id Software on is I don't think I've ever played a first-person shooter on a console that has played uh, as as buttery smooth as this game has. As, as you can see, I'm actually tearing through these enemies pretty well. I'm not really having uh, a massive problem with uh, taking these guys out. And the, the big reason for that is the controls. They're just so smooth in this game. Um, if you go back and you play a lot of old school first person shooters that used analog sticks, like go back and play like the original Time Splitters or something like that on the PlayStation 2 or, or even like Quake 3 on, on PlayStation 2 or something like that. Um, it's, it's a little, let's just say it takes a while to get used to. Uh, but Doom 2016, I was able to adjust pretty much instantly when I played this game. I think it took me like five minutes to get used to it. And then it, it just felt like second nature after that. They did a really fantastic job of translating the, uh, you know, typical, a typical keyboard and mouse control scheme to a dual analog stick setup. And it just works so well in the case of this game. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back. I'm going to show you one more secret. Uh, like I said, I'm not really trying to show you a lot of secrets, but we're in the very beginning of the game. I just want to give you guys an idea of uh, the things you can do in this game. And any other secrets I run into later on, just kind of along the way, you know, maybe I'll pick them up if they're beneficial to me, but, you know, I'm not going to be going out of my way for some of the things that don't really matter that much. All right, let me just come back down and kill some of these guys. Some more guys spawned, basically, so let me just take them out just to be safe. See, what I should be doing is using my grenades. I forgot that I even uh, picked up the upgrade for my shotgun. So, to use your alternate attack, you can hold it in the left trigger. Um, 
And so with the shotgun, I chose the grenade, and it's just... I love it. It's uh, such a powerful attack. Bam. See, I just killed that uh, imp in one hit. Sometimes when you blow guys up, you'll actually... They'll drop ammunition. So basically, health pickups are blue in this game. Ammo pickups are uh, sort of like an orangish color. Brownish, orange. Maybe bright yellow, even. I don't know. See, he actually just dropped uh, some more ammunition. Which, they don't usually give you a ton of ammunition when they drop ammo, but, you know, every little bit helps in this game. Let's see, can we go back up here? We can. Okay, so... One little secret here is, uh, well, is right here. And this actually kind of harkens to uh, some Doom, aftermarket Doom wads. Uh, in some of these Doom wads you can play for classic Doom, they give you these little, like, Doom dolls you can find. Uh, I don't think you can really pick them up, but you see them throughout them in a couple of the mods I played. And this is kind of like a, you know, this kind of harkens to that. And it plays the uh, Doom 1, Episode 1, Map 1 theme just for a brief moment when you pick them up. It's a nice little cute Easter egg. There's a bunch of those throughout the uh, course of the game. I think there's one for like every enemy type in the game. Uh, so that was a classic Doom guy. That was an imp model, apparently. And they all look like, you know, the same, the same classic Doom guy model uh, in like a chibi form, which is really cool. I, I love the, the, just all the extra stuff they put into this game. They really, uh, I think, went above and beyond with Doom 2016. If you couldn't tell already, I really like this game a lot. I think it's a, definitely a fantastic game. And uh, as a classic Doom fan, I really couldn't be any more pleased uh, with, uh, with this game, really. Um, I will be uh, interested to see if they ever do a sequel. And if they do, what sorts of... Uh, tweaks and improvements and so forth they make because there are definitely could be some improvements but all things considered i'm not i don't i think it, it's perfectly fine how it ended up and i would definitely be down for some improvements you know in the future with a uh, an actual sequel um but uh as it stands right now this game is phenomenal basically and i am totally okay with just about everything about it uh, as is as it stands uh, secrets and all. So this is actually ammo for um, your machine gun, uh, which I haven't gotten yet, actually. And um, so if they're giving me machine gun ammo right now, there's the possibility that uh, there might actually be a secret with the machine gun on this stage. Uh, so that's where you really want to like uh, look into getting your secrets and so forth. So if you press the back button on your controller. Uh, on this main mission screen here, it actually gives you uh, stats. So there's actually uh, three secrets. You can see it says secrets and then three question marks. So it's I'm definitely missing one secret. Um, and then I also get these uh, bonus points for exploring as much as I can. Uh, and I can use these bonus points for uh, weapon upgrades and so forth. So I got one weapon upgrade point for exploration. Uh, so let's go ahead and apply it to one of these things so I can apply it to this one, which gives me reduce the recharge time between explosive shots, increase the size of the explosion, uh, removes the load time for an explosive shot. I'll do that. So no reload time for that. Um, and if you press the triggers, uh, you can actually get what are called Praetor suit tokens eventually. I have none right now, but we're going to get some in, a, in not too long from now. And you can upgrade your actual equipment as well. So you can you can go with environmental resistance and things like that. Uh, better map technology to help you find secrets and so forth. Uh, the equipment system itself, so I can get better, like, you know, carry more grenades at once, have faster grenade recharge times, things like that. Power-up effectiveness. So you get power-ups like an old classic, you know, say quake, like quad damage and things like that. Invulnerability. This can uh, affect how long those last. And then you've got things like dexterity, like, uh, you know, how fast you can uh, grapple and stuff like that and climb. Um, and so here is the codex entries I was talking about. So if you if you ever get the game, you can just sit around and just read through that. I actually haven't done that yet, surprisingly. Um, and that's pretty much that. So let's just go ahead and jump out. This is going to exit us to the next level.
All right, on to the next stage. So load times in the Xbox One version um, on an original Xbox One system, not an Xbox One S or, you know, down the road, if the Scorpio comes out, this game will work on that. Um, on a stock Xbox One, it takes about a minute between stages, typically, to load. Um, so just a heads up, if you, if you haven't played this version. If anybody actually has the PlayStation 4 version of the game, I'm curious to know what the load times are like in that version. Uh, I have not played it myself. Uh, but yeah, on the Xbox One version, it usually takes about uh, a minute between stages. Alright, so something interesting that I forgot to mention is that, again, if you press the back button, it, you've got stats and so forth. But now, from this point on, you also have challenges for every stage. Um, so, uh, and completing the challenges will give you extra uh, weapon points, which you can again use towards upgrading your weapons. So it's one of the things I really like in this game. And it actually harkens back to Painkiller on the PC. And Painkiller, you had this card system. And to unlock the cards in the game, um, you, you would basically have like a challenge per level, like beat the level with only the painkiller weapon or find all the secrets in a stage. Doom 2016 has goals kind of like that, but they're usually a little bit easier, but there's multiples per stage. So I can do five different glory kills on the possessed. The possessed are um, basically those zombie guys. So you can actually do glory kills on multiple parts of their body. I can grab their neck. I can grab either arm. I can grab either leg. I can duck and grab the leg and do like a sweep. Uh, there's several different glory kills per enemy that you can do. So it says perform. There's at least five different ones on the possessed that I can do. Uh, find three secrets and then till kill two of the possessed with one trigger pull from the shotgun. I'm pretty sure for that one I can just use a grenade. Um, then there's also elite guards that you can find. They're all in the bottom. They actually give you the Praetor tokens, which actually upgrade, you know, works towards your suit upgrades. And then field drones in the bottom right, you can see there's one. That means there's one of those little drones that will allow me to, you know, unlock another weapon upgrade or something like that. Uh, and as you can see, there are eight secrets in this stage. There are a ton of secrets in Doom 2016. Uh, most levels have a, have a ton of secrets, and I haven't even found half of them yet. So, all right, so let's try to get a twofer. Well, let me kill the imp, though. Uh, when you're in rooms like this, try to take out the most dangerous enemies first. Like the imps. Yep, got the challenge point. I actually killed three in one shot, which is good. So the, the uh, grenade actually counts towards that. And we're going to have to actually open up this door first. Let's see if we can try to glory kill some of these guys. All right, variety is the spice of death. Let's see if I can sweep them. Nope, that didn't work. All right, so we got three out of the five. Bam, four out of the, out of the five. Maybe next time I can grab his neck or something. So we just flip this, and then uh, part of the story next story sequence sort of kicks in. But there's also a secret I'm going to go ahead and pick up here. I believe you can speak, especially now. And what will be your final moment in this world? So this is Olivia Pierce. She's one of the uh, the bad guys in the game. And uh, spoiler alert: she actually is the final boss of the game. And if you guys haven't actually played through this, I won't spoil exactly what she is. But if uh, if you've heard anything about this game and, and the bosses and enemies and so forth, you've probably heard already. And so that was... Should have been one secret. I think. Did it actually count as one secret? It did. Okay. I think there actually might have been another place in there we could have gone to, but I'm not going to worry about it. All right, and this is going to open up this area down here. And let me see if anything is over here. This, I, I wonder if that's where the classic Doom area is in this one. I'm pretty sure there's a classic Doom area on this map. All right, so sit, let me see if I can get behind one of these zombies and see if that works as a glory kill. Nope. I mean, it worked as a glory kill, but not what I was trying to do. 
Nope. So I've already done that one. I'm basically trying to get the last unique glory kill so I can get another that extra weapon point. Nope, already did that one too. Okay, not too worried about it. We'll probably get it at, you know, by the end of the stage. I'm actually not too worried about, like, upgrading all my weapons and so forth. I mean, it's definitely nice if you can do it, but it's not really a mandatory thing. Um, if you can get a lot of upgrades, though, it, it definitely does help. It absolutely does help. Actually, what I can probably do, and I didn't even think about this, is jump up and glory kill him. Because you can do glory kills while you're in the air as well, and they count as what's called death from above glory kills. And uh, so I think that's probably how I'm going to get my last glory kill on, on these zombies. A.K.A. the possessed. Let's try it on this guy. Yep. So that actually gave me two weapon upgrade points, and, uh, alright, it looks like I need one more. So I think the last one I need is, yeah, find three secrets. I'm probably not gonna find, well, I might find three secrets, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, we died. That sucks. And and what really sucks about dying is that you've got to experience a load screen all over again. And sometimes they're relatively quickly, but I mean, they're just long enough to where it's just like, ah, uh, I wish I had a PC strong enough to play this game. Uh, particularly on sections where you die a lot. Because <laughs> there are some sections like that uh, throughout the course of this game. And that was a really dumb death too. I shouldn't have died there, but... What I basically did is I did a glory kill on top of a guy, and there were a bunch of other dudes surrounding me. Uh, but it's okay. You know, one of the benefits to doing these sections over and over is that whatever progress you made towards a goal, um, those are saved. So either like a weapon upgrade goal, uh, either a weapon upgrade goal, or something like, uh, you know, finding a certain amount of secrets. Um, actually, I'm not sure if the secrets one is saved. Um, but things like, uh, you know, your challenges and whatever, those are, those are saved actually, which is nice. Actually, I don't know if your actual challenges are saved, now I think about it, but your weapon upgrades are saved. So, uh, one of the upgrades for the shotgun is to kill 20 imps with the, uh, explosive shot. And you have to hit them dead on with the explosive shot. Um, and so that progress will be saved. Use my grenade on that guy and try to do another glory kill because I'm running out of health and ammo, actually. But again, we got a lot of these zombies here. I'm just going to call them zombies from here on out instead of just possessed. But this is basically free health if you're glory, if you're glory killing these guys over and over. Now, you can also get the chainsaw, which is actually uh, something that I should be getting. Uh, in just a moment. Uh, we're going to actually go back up as well. And we just hit that. I'm going to come over here. And this is our chainsaw right here. Now, the cool thing about the chainsaw in this game is that when you use it, it uh, dumps a ton of ammunition out of enemies. Basically, they just explode into ammunition. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but from a gameplay perspective, you know, uh, it's a way to uh, increase your ammo uh, or replenish your ammo. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go back. This is actually what I intended on doing before I got the chainsaw. So let's go ahead and just switch back to the shotgun. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's another area I can go up to here. And that might actually... Oh, so that top area didn't even count as a secret. Okay. So let's come back. I was pretty sure that was a secret too. All right, whatever. Like I said, we're not going to be looking for secrets and stuff like that. I just thought there was a secret up there. And there probably is, and I just... I just didn't trigger it or find it. Well, I was pretty sure there was also a classic Doom stage somewhere in here. And I thought going upwards uh, would do it. So let's just go ahead and push forward. This let's play is going to take long enough as it is. I don't really need to be dicking around with, with things like that. Unless I absolutely know they're there. But uh, one of the things about this game is that despite me having played this game so much, like I've, I've finished this game, I think, five or six times now. All either on Ultra Violence or Nightmare. And um, I still don't know where half the secrets are in the game. I haven't tried going through uh, and finding all of them. And I've, I've been intending on it, but I still haven't gotten around to it yet, unfortunately. So... Um, but it really just goes to show, like, how much stuff there is in the game. Like, despite me having finished this a, a ton of times, really, um, uh, there's still a lot for me to do, actually, which is really awesome. So, something uh, of note in this game is if you ever get lost, uh, the game actually sort of tells you where to go by green lights. So, you can see there's a bunch of green lights in here flashing. This basically means, like, okay, this is a, this is a good place to go. And this should take me up here. So let's demonstrate the chainsaw. If I use it on a guy, you'll see tons of ammo coming out, just like that. Unfortunately, it's not really that useful right now. Um, because I'm pretty much maxed out on ammo anyway. I only have the pistol and the shotgun. I still haven't gotten the machine gun. Uh, which should actually be uh, very shortly. Unless I just walked past it. I thought, uh, well, maybe it's on the next stage, I don't remember. I think the next stage is the Foundry. I believe it's the Foundry. Right, so what I just want to do is try to take all of these zombies first before I activate the uh, the Gore Nest. Get some health up. All right, that's good enough for me. All right, so now it's time for a fight. And this is where uh, playing aggressive is really good for you. Uh, but also playing smart is good for you as well. So I just hit a barrel, which killed that imp on the wall. You definitely want to take out these uh, these soldiers. And we're actually getting low on ammo, so busting out the chainsaw might actually do us some good right now. To get our shotgun ammo back. We're just glory killing the crap out of these guys. Out of ammo again. Let's switch over to the chainsaw. Get our ammo back. Now I'm kind of rec I'm I'm relying on glory kills to get my health back, but if you move around these little arenas, you do see like health pickups. I believe this is 
Uh, no, that's 20. Okay, so the big ones are 20. Uh, the really small, thin ones are like 3. And then there's others that are like 10. Alright, so we need to come down here. Our next upgrade and unfortunately let's see if we can kill this guy first I want to say like the machine gun is in this level and if it is I'd rather just uh, get that drone after I pick up the machine gun It'll just make life a little bit easier, basically. Yep, it's right here. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go back and pick up that uh, that upgrade. Except we're gonna upgrade the uh, heavy assault rifle. Sorry, that's what it's called. The assault rifle. We're gonna pick that up or upgrade this instead of upgrading the shotgun again. I actually don't really care for like the rapid fire aspect of the shotgun. I'd rather just uh, upgrade this. All right, so let's go back. Back to where we came from. I assume we can come back down here, call the elevator again. While we're at it, what are my weapon upgrade points like? Still at just two. That's it. Uh, but we do have... We don't have. Never mind. I thought we had some... <coughs> I thought we had at least one Praetor token, but apparently not. So... Um, and I can't unlock my assault rifle options until uh, I access that uh, drone up... Or that drone again. So getting sidetracked just a little bit, but this will help us out a little bit because basically what this does is it gives us the micro missiles, which are really good. Uh, they use up more ammunition in the beginning, but uh, they basically allow you to shoot these sort of like little mini rockets basically that explode. Let's go ahead and switch back to the shotgun. The shotgun is like the tried and true weapon for much of the game, basically. And this is still locked. All right, we're back outside. All right, so this right here is Berserk. So this is a classic power up from uh, Doom. Operates differently than classic Doom. However, you pretty much kill everything in one hit, guaranteed. Um, and it's only uh, temporary, so it's it's already about halfway up. But there are some enemies like these shield guys that are a major pain. You can kill them in one hit, and you'll probably see how much of a pain they are. Uh, later on in this stage. They start appearing quite frequently from here on out. Uh, unfortunately. They're some of the worst enemies in the game, actually.
Nice. Direct hit on the, uh, the imp. These are micro missiles. I'm pretty sure there's some uh, chainsaw ammo, and I think I just missed it. I think I walked past it. Any more enemies? No, I think that's pretty much it. No, actually, there are still some more enemies. The music will keep playing uh, if there's more enemies in the playfield. Okay, so there's more chainsaw ammo there, too. Uh, if what I understand is actually you can get the plasma gun early. I think it's a secret uh, somewhere in this level. Like I said, there's a ton of secrets. I've only found one out of eight. And um, so if you spend the time and explore, uh, you can actually get rewarded quite well. I mean, the plasma gun's a really solid weapon. I'm, pretty much every weapon in this game is, is a really solid weapon. And... Um, so if you know where the secrets are to get those weapons early, uh, it's definitely worth going for. Like, we're going to get the super shotgun early, uh, just slightly early anyway. And, um, and that's usually, like, the best weapon in the game, in my opinion. Uh, especially when the super shotgun is fully powered up. It's just, it's amazing. All right, so we're going to just leave that armor there. We're going we're gonna to have to come back out anyway, so. I'll try to make this as uh, streamlined as possible. Now, I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to cut off this Let's Play, this first part. I had thought about myself the first time playing through this and thinking maybe I could do it to where I get to hell for the first time. And then we'll basically pick off uh, right at the start of hell for the first time. You go to hell multiple times in the game. You kind of go bounce back and forth between hell and Mars. Um, and I think I want to say getting to hell for the first time is, is roughly about two to two and a half hours in. Uh, if you're playing relatively quickly, I've, I've been uh, sort of playing relatively slow just to like sit around and talk about things and, and so forth. So it might take us a little bit longer than that. And I'm not sure if I'm going to cut it off then or a little bit earlier. I guess, guess we'll see. Alright, so we need to come over here. We basically activated this. And we just do some vertical platforming. Always look for the uh, the green lights. That tells you where you need to go. Uh, that's a super helpful tip, by the way. Uh, somebody on Twitch gave me that, that tip when I was first playing through this game. Because for some odd reason, I hadn't noticed it yet. I hadn't realized that the green lights told you where to go. Uh, so yeah, very, very useful to know. There's a shield dude in there. Now, the shield guys, you can't really attack them from the front. They have like a tiny, tiny little opening like to the side of them. Uh, but realistically, you need to get behind them. Uh, use some explosives behind them. Like I'll toss a grenade behind them or a rocket later on in the game. Um... Gonna open up this area. Let's go ahead and use the use the chainsaw just to get our ammo back. I'm not sure how much ammo I have. Oh, that was nice. I killed that shield guy in basically one hit. So now you can actually kill the shield guys before they even charge it up. They basically have to make their shield appear. It's like it's like a it's charge up item that they have basically. 
So I actually went into that room. I knew the shield guy was going to be there, and I uh, used my uh, grenade with my shotgun and basically just took him out instantly. That was good. So here's our first um, Praetor suit token. These are the, uh, the, the elite guards, and uh, they house Praetor suit tokens, which you can use for uh, you. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go with the uh, grenade. Oh, I can't. It requires two. Never mind. Power up effectiveness. When a power up uh, increases length of time. Yeah, I don't want those. Uh, environmental resistance. Yeah, I'm going to do with this because the, the barrel resistance is actually really good. Because, uh, yeah, you can actually get it to where uh, you're pretty much invincible to, to like barrel explosions, which is really nice. These boxes right here, uh, it's ammunition, so if you see them, go ahead and uh, grab them. How many weapon upgrade points do we have, by the way? We're still at just two, unfortunately. Now, uh, not in this level, but I believe starting on the next level and on, uh, you get performance upgrade points as well. So, like, the better you play, or the more aggressive you play, um, you'll get upgrade tokens for that as well. So not only will you get upgrade tokens for things like uh, finding secrets and so forth, or basically just like the three challenges per stage, you'll also get weapon upgrade points just for killing stuff um, and finding stuff as well. Uh, so in a lot of cases, you can get a total of, uh, I guess, eight upgrade points per stage. Uh, and if you're really good, you can have a massive surplus of upgrade points by the end of the game and have almost everything upgraded, which is really nice. It's a gift. Take it. I'm going to go ahead and take this. So now when you get uh, these Argent cells, uh, a bunch of these canisters are, are littered over the, you know, throughout the course of the game. Um, you can basically upgrade your health, your armor, uh, and ammunition. So what I'm going to do is do ammunition because that's the one I have a tendency of running out of first. I don't mind health as much uh, because I, I can do glory kills and get my health back. And armor is over the course of the maps as well, so... All right, there we go. Now we can exit. Theoretically. All right, there we go. Now there is actually uh, one secret here that we're going to go ahead and just try to grab. I believe it's up here.
Now, if I just knew where one more secret was, I can get that upgrade token. But I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to worry about it too much. The upgrade tokens are nice, but I've got my shotgun, I've got my grenade, and I've got my uh, assault rifle. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good, basically. So, and that's it. All right, on to Meltdown. I believe this is the foundry. I wasn't really paying attention to the loading screen. After running more diagnostics on the active Brainer suit, it appears that I can accelerate the upgrading of your arsenal by measuring your combat effectiveness. I have added a tracker to your helmet's display. The facility will not allow you access to the turbine. Unless the demonic threat level is brought down inside the foundry. Our security systems cannot be overridden. Alright, so in the uh, top right top right hand portion of the screen now you can see how there's a couple of icons. Those are your weapon upgrade points that you can get. Um just for like general things like finding secrets, uh, you know, performing better in combat, shooting lots of stuff, things like that, finding items and whatever. Uh, every time you do stuff, uh, they basically increase. And uh, as they fill up all the way, you basically get awarded uh, an upgrade point. And actually, before we go into this, let's go ahead and figure out what our challenges are. So we kill three of the possessed with one explosive barrel. Perform three death from above glory kills on possessed soldiers. Okay, and the possessed soldiers are the guys that shoot those explosive shots out. And then find two collectibles, so... Not sure if I'm going to be able to find two collectibles, but uh, we'll try the other ones. Uh, so this is a possessed soldier right here. Unfortunately, I can't really... Uh, I guess I can jump in here. So you have to perform a death from above glory kill on them. Which is basically when you try to do a glory kill when you're in the middle of the air. All right, so what we need to do is actually, uh, we're going to have to come down here. And we're going to have to actually work our way back up. But there's a Praetor 2 token right here as well. And I'm just going to bank that for now. I'm not worried, really worried about using them immediately. And so just follow the green. We're going to do a little bit of platforming. And there's also going to be some armor up top we can pick up. So right here, some green armor. And we need to pick up this guy over here. He's basically our key. And that opens up this area, which gives us our first gore nest. Now, a lot of times when I play this stage, I always forget about this gore nest over here, and I always have to come back. So it's good that we're actually basically just doing this first. Let's go ahead and make all the dudes appear. And so I apparently want to kill three possessed, basically three zombies with uh, a barrel blast. So what I want to try to do is save the barrels. Oops, never mind. Too late. I was hoping a bunch of zombies would appear, but apparently not. Yeah, those are not uh, possessed soldiers. Alright, now we can just work our way back to the rest of the stage.
So we're going to experience our first Hell Knight in just a few moments. Now the Hell Knights in this game, they look a lot like the Hell Knights from Doom 3. Um, one of the cool things about Doom 2016 is it doesn't forget that Doom 3 exists. Uh, and if you watch interviews with uh, id Software, you can tell like they like Doom 3. You know, they had fun working on it and they're proud of that game. And um, if I was in their shoes as well, I would feel the same way. I think Doom 3... Especially for the time was a really solid achievement and we just died. Holy crap. That was dumb. That was that was totally avoidable um, And what I like about doom 2016 is it's not just like hearkening back to classic doom, but it, it recognizes all the doom games basically so um, And actually a lot of the graphics in this game you can definitely tell the you know they're, they're like an evolution of the visuals in Doom 3. Um, in many parts of the game, it's a very similar graphic style. And Doom 3 looked phenomenal, um, you know, 2004 when it came out. And so I really have no no qualms with that. It's uh, And in some cases, Doom 3 still looks really nice as well, you know, depending on how you're playing it. Like if you're playing it on a PC maxed out and, you know, you're playing the BFG edition, it can still look pretty solid in certain parts. So... And Doom 2016 definitely, uh, you know, it's definitely a bit of an evolution of that. It's not just, you know, a call to form uh, in a classic Doom sense. But uh, it also has a little bit of Doom 3 in it as well, which is nice. So. Alright, we need to get back because we're probably going to die at this rate. Now, unfortunately, there's a shield guy. Oh, the shield guy... I guess he got blown up. That's fine with me. So these are the possessed soldiers. You need to do, I guess, what's called the curb stomp. You jump up and do a glory kill while you're looking down at them as you're falling back down. And what you really need to do in some of these fights, if you don't want to die a lot, is... <sighs> Don't focus on, like, the goals and so forth, like the challenges, uh, because you're going to run into problems, basically. And what we're going to do is... Chainsaw this guy in one hit. So how the chainsaw operates is it, it takes away a certain amount of chainsaw ammunition. So small enemies like imps and so forth and, you know, zombies and, and you know, soldiers... Uh, they take one block of chainsaw ammo, and your chainsaw ammo is in the bottom right-hand portion of the screen. Uh, enemies like Hell Knights, they take more, though. They take three. And uh, so I basically took a chance there by trying to kill that Hell Knight with my chainsaw. But uh, honestly, I think it was worth it. Oh, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. I got lucky. The shield guys are the worst. And with the shield guys, you never want to bum rush them. You never want to just rush up to them head on. It never works. Ever. Basically. So. That was a really stupid move on my part. I thought I was going to die. But fortunately, he just kept uh, blocking my attacks instead of shooting at me. So, you look at how, like, large these stages are, by the way. There's, I mean, there's a ton of places you can go to. You can actually go all the way over to the edge. There's a couple of secret items you can get over there. Um, if you can do it without falling into the molten lava. Uh, which, it'll kill you in one hit, basically. So, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. But I just wanted to point that out. The, the graphical detail in this game, even on consoles, I think is, is amazing. And it always runs at a really fluid frame rate. The Xbox One version is not quite 60 frames a second, but it's really close most of the time. And so it's uh, definitely a buttery smooth experience for the most part, even in, like, you know, uh, the thickest of combat, basically. Got my second curb stomp. Got my third. We're going to go ahead and just take that weapon upgrade point. And what we're going to do is actually take a quick break and actually upgrade. So, 
We'll do speedy recovery on that, and we'll go ahead and try to use our next Praetor token if it's available. Uh, and it's not. All right, it's another fight. Looks like we got some chainsaw ammo too. We might have to use that in just a moment. Not necessarily have to, but the great thing about chainsaw ammo is it's kind of like a guaranteed kill. So it's just another way to stay safe. And just like if you do a glory kill, sometimes uh, enemies will drop health when you use the chainsaw. So the chainsaw is not necessarily just for getting ammunition back and killing guys, you know, instantly. Um, but it can also give you some health back. So uh, later on in the game, you're going to be using these, uh, these special weapons very regularly. So you're going to be using the chainsaw very frequently. And then you're going to also get the BFG... Um, and that basically operates in the same manner as, uh, like the chainsaw. In that, uh, it's got a, a very specific amount of ammunition, but, uh, it's very, very useful from a tactical perspective. Alright, so we got the yellow key, and we have to actually go back upstairs. And in order to do that... What am I doing wrong? Yes, this is going to take me right back down. Alright, let's go ahead and just jump back down here. Come back through here. There we go. I think that's good. Oh, secret found. Okay, well, I'll take that. Yeah, we just got a rocket launcher. Now this makes me wish that I didn't use the uh, the drone from earlier. Okay, so that's that's awesome, but yet it sucks at the same time because uh, I wanted to try to get back upstairs, which I seem to be having a hard time doing. <laughs> there we go. All right, much better. All right, so coming over here... Take us to our next set of fights, or our next fight in general. All right, there's also going to be uh, another one of these orbs we can pick up. And this time we're actually going to go ahead and go with health. Assuming we don't get sniped by an enemy from behind. I think this will actually give me all my health back as well. So, yep.
All right, we're going to have to face off with another Hell Knight as well. He pretty much just surprises us right here. We can use that barrel, and then we can use that barrel. Plasma gun. Look at that. You can get the plasma gun and the rocket launcher both in the same stage. Now the plasma gun has a very, very useful uh, special attack you can do once you unlock it. Uh, unfortunately, it's probably going to be a little while before you can get that. But uh, it's basically this stun attack where it, it shoots his blast off into the ground. And anything like in the general vicinity of the blast will just die almost instantly, and it's great. So we'll go ahead and just use the plasma gun, why not? There's another Hell Knight. Another fight, and we got lots of chainsaw ammo. Yeah, so if you can play really aggressive in Doom 2016, not only is it uh, just you know a lot easier to deal with all the enemies that pop out, but it's uh, also very very fun. Um, it's one of my favorite aspects of the classic id software first person shooters, uh, particularly Doom and Quake. They give you the option to play very, very aggressively and then when you get good at them. And Doom 2016 is no different. Yeah, we don't need that glory kill. Alright, so we have one more gore nest we have to take care of. And I think it's going to be... I think it's behind the blue door. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. So we are actually, you know, aside from dying that, that you know, once or twice... Uh, Still making decent progress on this level. Normally, I have to backtrack a little bit just because, you know, I don't do things in the right order. The optimal order, as uh, somebody would probably say. Yeah, so here's the last gore nest for this stage, and then we'll have what we need. We can go ahead and get to the end of the map. There's a bunch of enemies up top here. I could probably use my rocket launcher. Not a bad idea. Ooh. Maybe it is a bad idea. <laughs> I got lucky there, man. Now, the rocket launcher, you really want to use it like a Quake rocket launcher if you can. Now, it doesn't move quite as fast as the original Quake's rocket launcher, but it's a little bit faster than Quake 2's rocket launcher. So if you're used to those rocket launchers uh, in first-person shooters... Just kind of treat this rocket launcher the same. Just uh, shoot at the ground, kind of like this. So never, never aim directly at the guys with the rocket launcher in this game. Always aim at the ground. So if you're, you know, if you get a bunch of enemies on screen, if you bust up the rocket launcher, just don't look straight forward like this. Make sure you move the analog stick down a little bit, so you're just, you're working with splash damage and you're not, you know, missing them because you're trying to hit them directly on. All right, the question is, did I do what I needed to do there? Yeah, 
I did. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't get the upgrade token for killing... What the crap? Where'd you come from? Alright, that threw me off guard. That, I... Yeah, I had no idea the, uh, the Hell Knight was gonna be there. That was crazy. <laughs> I'm like, alright, I'm just gonna go through this door and I start taking damage. I'm like, what am I getting hit by? Because it was a lot of damage, too. So these stations here actually give you all your health back. Which is very, very nice. There's a bunch of them throughout the course of the game. Alright, so let's go back this way because the Hell Knight's probably around here somewhere. I see an imp. Where's the imp? There he is. How many guys are up here? Are they up top? I hear them, but uh, I don't see them, so... Where's the Hell Knight? Cause I know he's still out there. That... Yeah, I have no idea where he came from. Okay, cool. We're basically at the, um... I think the last section of this stage. This is a, a big fight as well. Alright, let's go ahead and switch to a better weapon for something like this. Picked up some armor. Let's use the chainsaw. So the great thing about the uh, the assault rifle is you can really do some damage from a, a really long range. There's going to be several more Hell Knights that are going to appear. I think I had to fight multiples at once, actually. Yep, there's one. Yep, the other one was right behind me. Killed him. And there's the other one. So now what I need to do is actually switch back to my uh, other modification for my assault rifle. Swap active mod. You press X to do that. Now, I'm pretty sure pressing uh, one of the directions on the D-pad will also swap your mod instantly. Which one is it? Yeah, pressing up will do it. I usually like to just go to the menu to do it, but if you can take your hands off the controller and just press up on the D-pad, then... Uh, you can do it that way as well. 
right, so music's still playing. There's another guy left over. Okay, yeah. Sometimes the imps are left over. And that's it. Oops. All right, let's go ahead and use uh, some of our weapon upgrade points again. So shotgun is my favorite one. Oh, we can't do it yet. All right, we're going to need to get one more upgrade point. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, so shotgun's my favorite one to upgrade first. Once you get the, the first three upgrades done, it unlocks a final challenge for the weapon. So uh, on the shotgun, as you can see, uh, there's a fourth one down at the bottom called Cluster Strike. So... Getting a direct hit with an explosive shot will spawn cluster bombs that deal additional damage. Um, so getting your weapons maxed out, uh, they become godly, basically. Uh, particularly like the super shotgun um, and uh, the plasma rifle and so forth. So, and... Okay, for some odd reason, I thought there was a secret here, but I'm getting confused with another part in the stage. Authorization Olivia Pierce. Alpha four zero two. All right, I think some more enemies are going to spawn in here. Or maybe I'm thinking of the second time you get to... Uh... Nope, I'm thinking of this time. And that's that for this level. <sighs> Beginning of the end. So now, you know, Olivia's Doom 2016 hasn't been out for 20 plus years like Classic Doom has. So I definitely don't know these levels like the back of my hand. Like I do Classic Doom levels. Um, so I'm not entirely 100% certain like the progression of the game. Like I have a general vague idea of where the game leads in my head. But I haven't obviously played it enough to where I can just, you know... <laughs> spout off every level and every level name and things like that and know exactly where the game's going to go. Um. But once I'm in these stages, I, I do recognize them, basically, because I have played um, them quite a bit. But Doom 2016, it's it's a long game, man. I mean, for like a... Uh, a a pretty straightforward first-person shooter or run-and-gun FPS. It's a uh, it's, it's quite a long experience, actually. So, all things considered. And let's go ahead and fall down here. There might be some items and so forth. And actually, we don't even really need this, but... Oh, dude! I jumped! I must have fell off the platform before uh, I pressed the jump button. I'm, wow, that was weird. 
I've never done that at that part. That's that's odd. All right, so something to talk about on this level is that this is actually where uh, your first runestone challenge appears. And we'll go ahead and do the first runestone challenge just to show you guys kind of what it's like. Um, but I'm going to skip them through, through the rest of the game just because they're going to slow down the uh, the playthrough, basically. I'm, we're going to have to sit through loaded sequences every time we access one and, and so on. So, so that was really weird. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> I have never done that before in that park. That was really odd. And I believe one of the challenges actually is to, yeah, interact with a trial rune, yeah, rune trial stone. Bird's eye view, acquire the auto map for the Argent facility. Um, to be knighted, perform two death from above glory kills on hell knights. That's going to be a little tricky, um, but we can try to do it. We still only have four upgrade points, so we can't do our next shotgun upgrade, but we will get one uh, very shortly. And the super shotgun might even be in this level now that I think about it. So we need to jump over here. And fail miserably again. All right, and do this one as well. And this is our first rune trial stone. So this is uh, use the combat shotgun to eliminate 15 imps before the timer expires. And if we do this successfully, we get the vacuum rune stone, which increases the range that you can absorb dropped items, which will definitely be handy. So let's go ahead and start this challenge. Now there's a lot of these rune trial stones uh, or rune trial challenges. And when you get the rune stones, um, you can upgrade the rune stones as well, just like you can upgrade your weapons. And uh, the rune stones upgrade more in a uh, experience point kind of fashion. So it'll be like collect 500 items you know so like every time you're glory killing somebody and you've got that rune stone equipped it's building experience points basically um so and it's and what you have to do to upgrade the rune stone rune stones varies from stone to stone so uh we just got to kill imps with the the shotgun and that's it uh every time you kill an imp uh you get a couple seconds added back to your time But you've also got to be quick about it because uh, time starts to run out really, really quickly. Uh, you can also die really fast as well. And we just failed. So we can go ahead and retry it. We only got 6 out of 15. Some of the runestone challenges can be pretty quick, uh, pretty challenging. Uh, others like this first one, it's not too bad. Uh, you should be able to get it on your first or second try. You've just got to get used to it because you're not used to having to kill so many enemies in such a short period of time, basically. That's one of the, the challenging aspects to it. Almost there. Got it. We were actually really close to dying on that one. And unfortunately, you cannot use your grenade power up with the shotgun to, to have it count towards the, uh, the rune challenge. Yeah, so basically it's got to reload the level all over again. <laughs> Not quite all over again. I don't think it's quite the same uh, load sequence as uh, before. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be chopping out a lot of the load sequences in this game, except for ones that I'm, I'm talking over like this. But um, uh, just to cut the time down just a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's one of the downsides of playing on the console versions. I mean, I can tolerate this because there's so much gameplay between now and the next load sequence provided you don't die that often because then you do have to see a load sequence but uh, the long load sequences are the ones that are between actual maps or levels or stages so 
All right, and uh, let's uh, equip our rune. And so when we get that, uh, we can upgrade it by absorbing 300 dropped items. And then that'll make, I guess, its ability a little bit better. So as you can see, there are uh, several runes uh, throughout the game. It looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's 12 of them total. And uh, as you upgrade them and find more rune trial stones, uh, you can eventually equip up to three of these at once. And um, along with your weapon upgrades, uh, they can be uh, quite useful. So what we're going to do is actually go with the, uh, the quick charge on the grenades here. Uh, this will mean our grenades will charge a little bit quicker, which is good because grenades are really good. Uh, they're really powerful and they're free, basically. You just have to let them charge up. So we're going to go ahead and also equip the, uh, the bigger boom for the shotgun. And then that opens up the mastery challenge. Get 20 direct hits on imps. Uh, so from here on out, I'm going to be trying to use my shotgun on imps, specifically uh, the grenade in particular, which will uh, work towards that challenge. Basically, uh, progress on the challenge will appear on the bottom right-hand portion of the screen if you're uh, successfully you know, working towards it. All right, uh, so let's come over here and get on with it. Go ahead and use our rocket launcher. As you can see, the shield guys, if you shoot your rockets behind the shield guys, um, it's really handy. So the splash damage on the rocket launcher is actually really, really good in this game. Uh, it's actually a little bit larger than uh, what it actually looks like. So the weapon mastery challenge, we're, we're two down, three down. See, this is where I'm okay with spending a little bit of extra time to try to, to try to upgrade things. We're already four in. That's actually pretty good progress so far. That would have been five if I hit him head on. Bam, five down. Can we get can we can we get six? Nope. I failed. It wasn't head on. Alright, so right here. I need to jump up and kill him from above. So I need to do that on one more Hell Knight and I'll get another upgrade point. Wow, we're already seven down on this uh, mastery challenge for the shotgun. That's actually really good. Normally I forget about it and uh, I, I don't get it upgraded until like another level or two in. But it's better, you're better off getting these upgrades like as soon as possible if you possibly can. And, uh,. All right, so that was the beginning over there, so we need to go this way. And this guy is going to fly to another part of the map. And actually what we're going to do with him, once we get him, is... Man, do I want the uh, plasma gun or the rocket launcher upgrade? I think I'll probably go with the plasma gun first. 8 out of 20. See, that was dumb because I was specifically going for the mastery challenge, but it's okay. I don't, you know, this is one of those situations where I don't mind doing it again because it's just going to allow me to kill more imps head on with my shotgun, uh, which will upgrade my shotgun faster. So that is one of the benefits to doing sections over and over is as long as you play it right, even if you die, you're still progressing your weapon upgrades, which is nice. It's it's great that they didn't reset that. It makes the whole checkpoint system a little less painful, basically. And actually, we might have to fight the Hell Knight again. Actually, no, it must have given us a new checkpoint when we uh, killed all those guys. So, okay. Okay. 
And the drone is back down below. Let's actually grab this. This is ammo. But I do want to go back and try to kill those imps again. Nine out of twenty. Come on, imps. I know there's more of you. <laughs> there's another one. And the great thing about explosives in particular is uh, it seems like there's a greater chance of uh, guys exploding into health pickups and so forth. As opposed to, like, you know, just shooting them normally. All right, I guess it's... Nope, there's another one. All right, so we're 11 out of 20 now on the uh, shotgun grenade head-on attacks. That's good. That's good progress. All right, so let's just keep going. So we actually need to clear out uh, these enemies before some of these doors will open. You'll notice this is area lockdown, neutralized threat, demonic presence, unsafe. <laughs> At unsafe levels. <laughs> that basically needs you basically means you need to go kill stuff. Let's grab this armor. Unfortunately, that didn't count towards my uh, my challenge. I wasn't high enough up. Let's try to get these guys cleared out before I start trying to kill this Hell Knight. Because I want to get that upgrade point from the Hell Knight if I can. Shoot, that was bad. Just gonna go ahead and use a chainsaw just to try to get a little bit of health back. Ooh, that's not good. Alright, a little bit of health right there. Alright, come on, Hell Knight. Get down here. A little bit closer. A little bit closer. There we go. Got it. So now doing what I'm doing and trying to play for like the weapon upgrade points, it's completely optional. Uh, and that's what I really love about the system is that, you know, you can have game playthroughs where you're just killing everything like the second you see them. Um, or you can do what I'm doing and intentionally try to get uh, as many uh, upgrade points as you can early on because then that makes life easier later on in the game. But again, it's not mandatory because the weapons, even when the weapons aren't fully upgraded, or not even a quarter upgraded, the weapons are still awesome. So, I mean, you could really just use the rocket launcher for the whole game if you really wanted to, as long as you were, you know, getting lots of ammo replenishments. All right, so that's one one of three filters. And I'm pretty sure that opens up later on.
13 out of 20. 14 out of 20. So basically, whenever I see an amp, that's I'm trying to hit him head on with my grenade so I can uh, upgrade my gun further. And what we're going to do is we're going to do uh we're going to do ammo again. Really? Really? I figured all the imps were gone. That was crap, man. That was crap. Now, the Argent Energy, I'm not sure if I have to collect that again. So we're going to have to go back there and double check that just in case. Fifteen out of twenty. Yeah, it's gone. Okay, so I, I collected it. That's fine. there was more to this room yeah I see green lights up top yeah okay we're not gonna go there just yet yep we're gonna come here There's the uh, the opening I was down there before. Okay. And this is going to open up after I do some more fights. Chainsaw ammo. Okay. I thought I saw some chainsaw ammo. And here's actually another uh, rune trial. Which I actually didn't realize this was up here. Uh, let's just see what this one's going to be. Dazed and Confused increases how long demons remain in the stagger state. See, that's actually kind of useful. But we're going to, like I said, we're going to just skip it for time constraints. Um, so if you ever decide to play this game, uh, assuming you haven't actually played it yet, uh, you know, feel free to just play around, get all the rune challenges and stuff like that if you can. And, uh, you know, have fun with the game. Explore. So one of the great things about Doom 2016 is the exploration factor. And uh, just the fact that you can do that in this game. It's not super linear to the point where, like, you're just forced along a set path. Uh, a lot of the stages are kind of a little bit more open like this. They re require you to go to a, a few different places. Um... And then find your quote unquote proper exit afterwards. It's not quite as free flowing as, say, classic Doom was, but uh, it still does a pretty respectable j job of, um, you know, remaining relatively faithful to that old formula.
16 out of 20 on the imps. Seventeen out of twenty. Eighteen out of twenty. Now I'm really risking myself here trying to attack these imps in a very specific manner. That manner basically being getting head on shots with the uh the shotgun grenade. Alright, that takes me back here. Go ahead and just use a regular grenade here. Now, I think normally when I get here, I access this area from down below, uh, which I did not do, which is actually kind of weird. So that is one of the cool things about playing through this game repeatedly is, you know, the levels in a lot of cases are set up in a way to where you are going to go through them slightly differently than you would, um, would have in other playthroughs. Uh, let's actually go down here real quick. Nineteen. Oh, I died. I died. That was dumb. The reason it was dumb is like I, I knew I shouldn't have hit that imp head on. So basically what happened is the blast damage from my own shotgun grenade took away like 90% of my health. And then I got hit by something else from behind. And, and that was it. So let's hope we hit a checkpoint as we ran into this place. We probably didn't. Yeah, I'm trying a little too much to get to get these upgrades, unfortunately, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? I'm sure you guys do actually. You're like, God damn it, would you would you please stop playing the same section over and over again? <laughs> you guys are probably like, it's bad enough these these episodes for Doom 2016 or this these are, are this long to begin with. And now you're just prolonging them even further. I could just go. Uh, can I just go down there? Well, I know I can. It's just like, am I supposed to? Okay. This is, yeah, no, this is actually where I, where I really wanted to go. So you actually get the super shotgun down to here. Uh, no imps. All right. So this is where you can get the super shotgun a little bit early. Otherwise, it doesn't appear until a little bit later on. Uh, but the weapon is awesome. Actually, now that I've got the super shotgun, when I go get that that uh, weapon drone, uh, I might just upgrade the super shotgun instead. Just so I can uh, get this powered up. Because when this is fully powered up, it's basically the most powerful weapon in the game. Alright, my weapon mastery challenge is complete for my regular shotgun. Which is good, so we can stop trying to upgrade that and stop trying to play stupid, basically. You guys are like, thank God. <laughs> but that is until I unlock the next mastery challenge for whatever weapon it's going to be. Alright, so there is actually a secret in here. You can bust open this wall. And 
and there's a weapon upgrade point for that. We uh, the goal was to get the uh, to the map map station, the auto map station. I actually thought there was like another secret in here as well, but I'm not sure. Oh jeez. So shield guys, always shoot them from behind with a rocket launcher. Basically aim downwards behind them and you'll uh, damage them with splash damage. Uh, I believe there's also haste. Yeah, haste is up there. So we're going to go ahead and activate this gore nest. And unfortunately, uh, we encounter the summoners for the first time. I believe that's what they're called. They're these chicks that kind of act similar to like arch vials from Doom 2 where they can... Um, revive enemies and really it's not reviving they do it a little bit differently in this one they basically just spawn new enemies out um <clears throat> so not quite the arch files but uh you know they they do have some similar traits so i'll be really interested to see if they do make a uh an actual doom 2 and um perhaps actually bring the arch files back there's still quite a few enemies um that they could bring back from Classic Doom, basically. Um, like the actual Arch Vial, um, the Arachnutrons, they could bring those back as well. And uh, just regular zombie soldiers to, to begin with. Like, there's these, like, other kind of, like, zombie soldiers. They're, they're soldier-like, but they're not quite, like, uh, you know, the standard marine, zombie marines from, you know, classic Doom and Doom 2. Okay, this isn't where we need to go. We need to come back down. I think it's in here. So we've still got a ways to go. What I think I'm going to do is I think we're going to go ahead and just plow through until we get to the first hell stage. And um, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. It's going to probably take a little bit longer than I initially planned. I figured it was going to take two to two and a half hours to do that. But I think it's going to take us a little bit longer. Um, I can't really see the uh, the recording clock right now, so... And sorry I'm talking through all these, like, uh, slight story sequences. There's the summoner right there. Let's use that super shotgun because it's awesome. Yeah, so the summoners are a massive pain. Uh, for one, they constantly spawn enemies, but they also teleport all over the place. So they are, aside from the shield guys, uh, the worst enemies in the game, in my opinion. Now, if you can get your plasma gun charged up or powered up all the way, uh, like I said, it's got the, the freeze functionality where, or stun functionality, where you can shoot it into the ground and... Um, and enemies will freeze in place. So what I, what I like to do is basically uh, stun the uh, the summoner and then use a better weapon and attack it that way. Actually, let me see where I'm at on my uh, my upgrades. Where are we at? Oh, we actually we got all the challenges. Okay, awesome. But there's actually two field drones in this level, and I still haven't... One of them is... Yeah, one of them is like way down there or something like that. Um... Yeah, we'll see. Well, here's another Praetor token. You know, if I don't get the upgrade, it's not the end of the world. I'm not too worried about it. But still, like, I, I definitely wanted to get it, but I actually kind of got ahead of myself. And and I don't really feel like going backwards unless it's literally right down here somewhere. I think it's... All right, screw it. It's down here. We're going to go ahead and do it. Uh... Where is it? Here it is. Okay, good. <sighs> All right, you know what?
Oh, wait, what? I can't do the super shotgun yet. You're kidding me, right? What? Huh, interesting. Oh. Wait. What? That's weird. It, uh... It's allowing me to upgrade my uh, super shotgun, even though I didn't unlock the upgrade. I guess in certain cases, you don't have to actually go to this, uh, the, the drone, to upgrade it. All right, whatever. Well, we're going to do the uh, stun bomb for the plasma gun, then. This will help us a lot if we can upgrade this and, uh, and then use it on, like, summoners later on in the game. Any doors here? I don't, I don't think there are. Yeah, we just walk right back up. Yeah, so that's actually the weapon drone I wanted to go to. And actually, what's funny is I don't think it's going to really set us back at all. Yeah, I think I'm right back to where I, I was. And I need to get back up top, actually. So I guess we'll come through here. Something to note about these weapon chests is that, uh, or the ammunition chests, is they do come back. You can really see how just badass the super shotgun is. Particularly if you use your L, L trigger to sort of like zoom in a little bit, you're much more accurate with it. And as such, it does a lot more damage. Now, what you can actually do is when you get it fully powered up, you can fire it twice in a row, back to back. It goes pop, pop, and it basically does double the damage that it that it already does, and it's insanely powerful. All right, so here's uh, Berserk. We're going to go ahead and just use that. I like to save the power-ups from, like, when I really need them. Uh, but if I see, like, a summoner or something like that, then I'll pick the power-up right away just to get rid of the summoners because the summoners will make life just total hell. And I understand that that's probably the whole point of it. This is the last one. Stopping our energy production is what you want, then you need only to destroy this last filter, and Argent energy will no longer exist in this solar system. We will be back at square one. All right. You have no idea what you have just done. Olivia is still alive. I perfected her life signature at the Argent Tower. She has removed one of the accumulators from the tower base. It has a unique energy signature that we can track. Well, that's it then. Questioning your fate? There's nothing else to be done. Oh, <laughs> the exit's right, exit's right here. Man, I'm getting to that point where I've, I've been playing for so long, I'm starting to get dyslexic. Like, I'm actually a little bit hungry. Uh, all right, guys, so we're a little over two hours in. I have a feeling this is probably going to take us another 30 to 40 minutes perhaps i think this might actually be our last stage uh before we go to hell itself uh, i believe we basically start outside we eventually work our way inside 
and we start doing a lot of uh, vertical platforming. Uh, we do get the double jump boots here, which is great. Not sure if they're actually called the double jump boots or if it's like the gravity boots or something like that. Oh, that's right, and here's the revenants for the first time. This is where the uh, the good old revenants are introduced from Doom 2. Fortunately, they're not nearly as difficult as they are in Doom 2. Actually, they're not that hard in Doom 2, come to think of it, but... They can catch you off guard in that game and really dish out some damage. And in this game, they're not quite as threatening. Um, which, for uh, all the other stuff that goes on in this game, is probably for the better. So our double jump boots are in here. The Delta V jump boots. And there's actually a health station here, which I didn't know about. And so with the double jump, uh, you just tap jump twice and that's basically it so uh, a lot of the platforming from here on out is going to require the use of double jumping so get used to it <clears throat> and you know it's actually kind of weird playing like the early parts of the game after you've finished the game a couple times um, because you don't have the double jump boots when you first start the game uh, there's no, like, New Game Plus or anything like that where you can just start off with all the upgrades that I'm aware of. So every time you start the game, you're back to square one in terms of your power-ups and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and increase health this time. And uh, so what we need to do is we're going to have to actually work our way all the way across this uh, large chasm to get to the the tower on the other side basically so and uh, we basically start that with the uh, the double jump boots what are my challenges on this one perform four neck or jawbreaker glory kills on the imp attack from behind okay um, find three secrets over killer Kill 15 demons using quad damage. Oh, that's this level. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I know what level we're on now. Okay. Sometimes I can figure out what stage I'm on um, and get a visual in my head just by, like, what the goals are. Because I know that if I have to kill 15 enemies with quad damage, there's going to be a lot of quad damage on this stage, basically. Pretty sure I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I have to come up here first. Where's that imp at? He's all the way on the other side. There's a couple, actually. They're actually really difficult to see. So, let's actually go back to that. Switch over to our tactical scope. Bam, just like this. That's one. Where's the other one at? He's all the way over there. Any more? I think that's... Oh! Oh my god, he killed me! What?! Ah, oh, I feel like such a noob. <laughs> you know, what I normally do on this level is I go all the way over and I kill everything and then I come back. And that's that was part of my mistake is, you know, if you don't go all the way over and kill everything, uh, then they're shooting at you with fireballs from all the way across the map. And they do some damage. They definitely do some damage. So 
That was unexpected. <laughs> Add another death to the repertoire. Yeah, I'll go ahead and just snipe these guys out of the sky this time. It's not usually my style of play, honestly, but... Dude, he's not dead yet. Come on. Oh, that's cheap. Looks like there's two imps up there back to back. He jumped right in front of me. So you can really see how, like, if you're caught with some imps in, like, small areas like this, where you don't really have that much room to move, uh, they can actually be really, really dangerous. Because uh, basically what I'm worrying about right now is not falling off the edges. You know, like, I, I have to deal with the imps, yeah, but then I also have to worry about falling off to my death. You know. <clears throat> so I'm the trying to take out these imps in safety, but I'm also trying not to fall. And I'm not trying to be too sloppy with my double jumps, so I don't accidentally jump off to my death. Accidentally. Right, I'm going to bust out the old rocket launcher. Because I want to say there's going to be a shield guy or two up here. Actually, we'll go plasma gun for now. Yep, shield guy. Shield guy's dead. Got a weapon upgrade point, and let's go ahead and use this. All right, so we're gonna use the uh, the lock on burst for the uh, the rocket launcher. I think that's my favorite rocket launcher upgrade. So basically, what I can do now is holding the left trigger, and it'll lock on and do a uh, three rocket burst on an enemy. So like three, or is it four? I don't remember. So multiple rockets will fire out. After I've locked on. Alright, so now we need to make a jump over here. And are there any secrets over here? Because I think one of the weapon upgrade points we can get is actually for secrets so but I can't really tell so I'm not gonna worry about it back again with Olivia Pierce one of the main villains in the game
Yeah, find three secrets. I need one more secret to get a free weapon upgrade point. And I'm pretty sure one is right here. Hopefully. No, it's not. Th that's normal, actually. But there's our first super shotgun. If you don't uh, find the secret one that I found earlier. <clears throat> Alright, so there's actually going to be some quad damage here. We're going to actually switch over to... Uh, Hello, goodbye. Switch over to the plasma gun just so we can try to get our goal with uh, killing multiple enemies with uh, the quad damage. 15 specifically. Oh, we need two more. There, I think there's going to be another set of quad damage later on in the level. But if you use your quad damage uh, well enough, uh, you can really tear through some uh, arenas of enemies. Like this one. We just, we just demolished everything. Usually that's actually a pretty tough fight. Can we push this off? <laughs> Still trying to keep an eye out because we have uh, one more secret to find if we can. I don't know if we're going to find another one. Okay. I, we're definitely getting close to... Um, the end of this stage and I think I'm pretty sure this is the last stage and then uh, and then we go to hell and uh, that's where I'm going to be ending this let's play this episode I'm going to be uh, I intend on completing the entire game uh, so every episode is probably going to take you know a similar amount of time unfortunately it's going to be a long series but um, and I predict there's going to be you know four parts most likely at the very least. But uh, I do intend on going through this entire game. So basically this whole tower, we have to scale it vertically and get to the very top of it. So it's kind of an interesting section in the game. It's one of the few sections where you're doing a ton of vertical platforming. But there's also some good firefights as well in the process. And we encounter the Mancubus for the first time. This is a classic Doom 2 enemy. I think I hear another Mancubus up top somewhere. Probably want to get this armor. Oh, I missed it. So like I said, we got their lock-on burst now, which is really useful. But it does eat up more rockets. So something I don't think I really mentioned with the glory kill is uh, enemies do come back to life uh, if you don't glory kill them in time. So when they're blinking and they're just uh, stumbling back and forth, 
uh, that's when you really want to do your glory kill. And actually, I think I just completely screwed up. Because that was my claw damage right there. I just need two more enemies, though. Fourteen out of fifteen. Bam, got it. Got the challenge, at least. Okay. And that was my last enemy, too. <laughs> I forgot there was quad damage there. I thought it was on a later part of the stage, but I was wrong. Oh, there's still some more enemies. Okay. Leftovers. Yeah, and that's it. That was the last enemy. All right. Go to the green area. Uh, there's actually another rune trial stone somewhere here. But like I said, I'm not going to be worried about trying to get those or anything. It's actually farther up top, I believe. So this is where we have to start climbing vertically. And if you're new to this game and you're playing this section for the first time, again, just go for the green, basically. That's all you need to do. So just look out for all the green. Such cool visual effects in this game. Though. I love the, the work they did on the, uh, the, the graphics. It's always a staple with uh, id Software engines is uh, the visual quality. They're always nice to look at. And uh, I would love to play this on a PC with, you know, on max settings, basically. Uh, unfortunately, I'm playing on the Xbox One, but it still looks pretty damn good. Like, all things considered. this to open and then jump up like that and here's another fight I don't think we got a checkpoint either All right, making progress. Yeah, let's just figure out where we need to go now. And as usual, let's just look for the green. So that's a green door up there we have to go to. So let's climb up here. Pretty sure we can double jump over.
All right, we're going to go back to ammo. We're going to max out our ammo first. It just makes life so much easier when you can just hold about as much ammunition as you possibly can. All right, so we're actually getting close. Once we get to the very top, uh, we're pretty much good. We need to just get on this. It's going to take us, you know, most of the way back up the tower. dead we're so dead what the i thought he was gonna grapple onto that pretty sure he was supposed to latch onto that there were green lights and everything so maybe i just mistimed my jump oh man lots of deaths on this playthrough it's a little disappointing i was expecting to uh, do things a little bit smoother than this but you know whatever it is what it is We'll see how the uh, the later stages are. I, some of the hell stages are pretty tough. So, um, like the I think the first hell stage is actually the hardest of of the bunch because you don't have like the BFG. You know, you've got the chainsaw, but the chainsaw doesn't clear the entire screen of enemies like the BFG does. So. All right, let's try this again. Get another nice pleasing look at the uh, the scenery. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Okay, I was supposed to just jump up to that. Oh, I got lucky. I thought I was going to miss that. Alright, so you got to watch out for these two. I think those will actually hurt you. What are my upgrade tokens like as well? Okay, we're at quite a bit. Awesome. All right, so now kill multiple demons with the super shotgun blast 30 times. So this one's actually a lot of work, but if we can get this upgraded, we are golden. Oof. All right, we're going to... Oh my god, I still got hit by that projectile. See, that was stupid. I got zapped by the, uh, the environment, and then I got hit by the imp. What I should have done is switched over to my assault rifle, but I was getting I was getting greedy. I wanted to switch over to my chainsaw and just chainsaw the imp. But I really should have known better. Yeah, I need to jump on this one up here. So basically what you do is you wait for these to come down, you jump on top of them, and then they take you where you need to go. But you need to try to jump on the right one, otherwise you'll miss. All 
All right, that's two. Two out of 30. <laughs> Basically, I have to cut through multiple guys 30 times. And when you cut through them multiple times, you have to actually kill both of the enemies that you're trying to slice through with one shot. So it's a little tricky to say the least. Not too bad, actually. We're at 6 out of 30 already. We need to come up here. And here's the other uh, rune trial. Let's just see what this is. <sighs> equipment power increases effectiveness of equipment items. So that'll be like, um, you know, increase the power of like grenades and stuff like that, which is quite useful. So we need to come back up here. All right, so we got a hologram grenade type, which basically uh, forms a hologram. And I think enemies basically just try to come after that. But uh, I don't ever use that. I just use your regular grenades because uh, they do a lot of damage. And like I said, they're basically free. It's just a, mal uh, a matter of like them charging up basically. So this part right here, you got to actually shoot these uh, weak points and then this elevator falls. And uh, I believe this is actually the final part. I'm actually surprised we're here already. So, two sets of armor, a bunch of ammo. We'll go ahead and switch over to the rockets. And um, so when I first played this, I was under the impression that I had to sit here and fight. But it's actually a big arena. You can actually move around. So I actually suggest moving around because I'm pretty sure there's some quad damage on the other side. We just reached a checkpoint. And we got a bunch of revenants and so forth. So we're gonna come down this way. Invulnerability, look at that. Stupid, man. Ah, get beat down by the Revenant. Wow. I got hit by something that took away a ton of health. And I don't I don't think it was the Revenant's rockets. It might have been one of like the the zombie soldiers or whatever with like the explosive blast shots. Ah. So, you know, if you've never played this for the first time, uh, this is why you probably shouldn't play the game on Ultra Violence. Uh, it's challenging, man. Like, I'm really familiar with the game, and yet I still let my guard down and I die frequently. I, I die much more frequently than I should, really. It's the kind of game where, like, if you're really on point, you should be able to get through it without, you know, dying, basically. But... It also requires you to be really on point to get through it without dying. It's tough. You know, it's very intense. It's fast. It's awesome. <laughs> very, very awesome. But it's also, you know, like I said, it's not easy. All 
right, so let's get back over here, try to get some armor. There's our there's our quad damage. Let's grab that. More armor. And that's actually it. We are done. So that's basically the end of the Let's Play, guys. That is um, that's going to take us to hell. So we'll go ahead and just sit through this last loading screen. And uh, if you've never seen hell before, I'm not going to spoil it right now. We're going to save it for the next Let's Play. Um, so I'd like to say thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the first part of this Doom 2016 Let's Play. I know it probably wasn't as entertaining as other Let's Plays simply because, like, of the length of the game. I mean, it took us almost three hours, most likely, to get through uh, probably the first quarter of the game. That's probably about the first quarter of the game. Maybe the first 20%. It just re it really depends on how many times you die uh, and how, much, how slow you go through it, how fast you go through it, and how much trouble you have in general, or how much how much exploration you do or something like that so but still i hope you guys enjoyed it stay tuned for future parts like i said in the beginning of the video i don't know how many parts i'm going to do it depends on how many it is i don't know if it's going to be three i don't know if it's going to be six uh I, i'm really not sure I, I ran through the game on twitch a few weeks back like i said and i'm pretty sure it took me like about 12 hours to get through it. Maybe a little bit less, maybe like in between 10 and 12. I'm not sure the exact number. Um, but on most of my other playthroughs, that was, that was about the correct number. That's about what it took me, uh, to get through the game. And, uh, so on every playthrough I've done, I've done, you know, moderate exploration. I'd say a little less than moderate. So I've done a little bit of exploration. I've gotten some secrets, but I haven't done a ton of exploration. So 10 to 12 hours seems about right on my average playthrough of this game. So we'll see how, uh, how long the rest of this takes. I'm not sure if I'm going to crank out Doom 2016 Let's Plays back to back simply because not everybody in my channel is going to be interested in strictly this you know, 12 hours of let's play of, a, of the same game. So I might alternate from Doom to another game and then back to Doom and then back to another game uh, to keep things fresh. And then I'll have the live streams every other two weeks as well, mixing things up for you guys. So, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to wrap it up here. If you have any questions or comments or anything, you know, be sure to post a comment down below. Uh, if you're brand new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I've got a ton of let's plays on here, uh, mostly retro uh, and Let's plays of all the classic Doom games. I've got those on here as well, uh, as well as some other id software classics like Wolf 3D and Quake and so forth. Um, so feel free to subscribe and uh, check out my other videos and stay tuned for future content as well. Everybody that's already subbed, thanks as usual for your continued support. Like I said, I hope you really enjoyed this Let's Play. Uh, and we'll be back with part two soon. So take it easy, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll catch you in the next video.